that's all kind of equal. And yeah, probably no imbalance of drugs. Mm. So, yeah, let's see. Okay, this is going to be a voice from off camera. You're talking about Charlie Manson. Yeah. I played Charlie Manson in a uh, in a short piece written by a guy who's kind of fascinated by the cult of personality. And I did a lot of research on Manson mm -hmm. to play the role. And I think that his cult of personality was a mechanism for him because he started off, he was the child of a prostitute who abandoned him like at six and then came back and picked him up and abandoned him again. So he's fucked up. He uh, uh, basically was a immoral character in his early teenage years, starting around the age of 14. He was a reform school, regular reform school, um, which is what they called um, Judy back then. Um, he was an inmate, basically. When he was 16, he sodomized at knife point to the throat a fellow inmate. Um, he's not a nice person. He was a fucked up, dominance, control, focused individual. No and wonder uh, his audition for the monkeys failed. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. He was, and you know, he, I think he had a lot of um, ambitions. Like, he tried to be a rock musician, but it wasn't his, you know, he really didn't have the chops for it. And he got very fixated on it, and um, the reason he went to the Tate LaBianca place uh, was because a manager that he had tried to pitch, who had been like initially, okay, sure, come by, play your stuff, and then rejected the demo reel, he was going back to get that producer, but he'd moved, and still owned the place, but was renting it out to the Tate LaBianca people, that's the, the I mean, sorry, the LaBiancas were a, a sort of like an unrelated thing, but the Tate murders were at that, that place in uh, Los Feliz, I think, or north. somewhere near, nearby, Hollywood Hills, so like really close, and um, and they were, he was actually, he went the first time, and he was confronting the people who were the residents there, just like completely not relating to the fact that they had nothing to do with his rejection, and he confronted the... Um, the groundskeeper, there was an, a, an off-site, on the, but on the property, but detached, like, cottage for the groundskeeper. The groundskeeper was all, you know, like, the high and whatever, when he came by, it was like, oh, no, it's not me, you don't want to talk to me, you want to talk to the other people. And then he went and killed them. That right? Nice. He was there when they were being killed. Oh. So he was an initial suspect, this groundskeeper guy. But, um, but, you know, he was like, no, no, there was this crazy dude who came by asking about, you know, blah, 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 the owner. And so, it's, Charlie Manson, there are a lot of people who are like, no, oh, Charlie Manson had a lot of good things to say. But I think all the good things he's had to say were a false front, sort of like Bush is like religious, right, false front. Yeah. He doesn't care about religion. He's not a Christian, but he manipulates Christians for his own ends. I think Charles Manson manipulated love and family for his own ends to aggrandize himself. Wow. That's my take. From, was, from based on research and my own personal opinion. So he wasn't like Ian at all? Well, all human beings are alike to a, to a certain extent. We're all the same. But hopefully Ian is not that vindictive about rejection. No, not I mean, you know, you're, you're an actor and, you know, you... If, if you're going to pick an industry that is rejection-based, where like 80% of what you do is actually re being rejected, that's your job, really, is that's being weird. rejected. An actor's job is being rejected. That's an actor's job is being I'll rejected. I always tell or, myself that I'm doing my job very well. Or to learn how to get rejected and still be able to do it again. Exactly. Which, in a way, is kind of like life, but condensed. Most people, like, the, I was having a con conversation with... Rebecca Larson, also a YouTube enthusiast. Um, and we were talking about uh, like what most people versus us. And it's kind of a conceit to say we're not most people. But in a way, you know, people that... Most people, I think, they get like 20 jobs in their whole life. People in the performing arts, they get 20 jobs in a year. Or two, uh, if, they're, if they're lucky. If they're lucky. If they're lucky. You know, and and you know, let's let's include non-paid jobs in that 
then, you know, you're just out there and you're doing your shit. You don't worry about the money. But that is not what most people are about. It's even tempting. Like, I temp a lot. Or have temp a lot. And that's like a lot of changing jobs. It's real oh, frustrating. Yeah. Always at the bottom working hard. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I've, I've tempted too. And my experience with employers is like, wow, you're not the average temp. I think some people like live the temp lifestyle. They don't give a fuck. You know, they just show up for two days and go this away. This is going to be a two-part, huh? I'm sorry. I totally took it on a different direction. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie. I'm going back yeah. upstairs. Sorry. Was this just the Charlie Manson thing? It's fascinating to yeah, me. Yeah, I understand that. I mean... It's, it's really what it's about, I think, is that power comes from other people investing in someone else's vision. Like, you don't... You can't take power. Only other people can give it to you. Power is not but something... But that's... I mean, power over other people. Well, that's that's essentially what power means. I mean, if you were living alone on an island, uh, your no power is meaningless. You know, it's just you and nature. I love but, nature. Yeah, oh, nature's awesome. It's the only game in town. But when it comes to working with a culture, that's where power is something that makes a difference. I think nature can give you power. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, yeah. just the fact that we have consciousness mm -hmm. gives us power over, you know, a deer. We can set a snare that it can't foresee. So that gives us a certain advantage, and I guess an advantage is another word for power, in a way. Because what is power but using advantage? Or having advantage to use, whether you use it or not, that's what power is. And wisdom, whether or not you should use it. Yes. Yes, indeed. Wisdom. You getting all this? To sustain the power, I think wisdom is necessary. Yeah. Because otherwise it's like, is it really power if you have it for a moment and then it's gone? I mean, and, then, and then there's the people who are hungry for power and just wanted more and more power. I mean, what, what would Bush possibly want with more money? Nothing. So it's all about power by now. I don't think you know? he wants more money for himself. I think Bush is a little lost boy. Who wants friends real bad? Oh my gosh! And if he can, if he can Maybe get, if he stops, stops bullying in the playground, yeah. you know, stop taking over the sandbox, literally. And where are you from? You have a bit of an accent. I'm German Italian. German Italian, Swiss? No, no, no. That's there's like a, that. I'm sorry, I, I did it in Swiss girl for a while. That's the depth of my knowledge of. Europe, so I know there's a, a, a crossover area where Switzerland and... and Switzerland. Actually, I, I was raised mostly in North and South America. Oh, really? And uh, sometimes South Africa, and, um, and so I got a little bit of everywhere. Yeah, a polyglot. Yeah, I'll say so. I mean, I do speak five languages. I was trying to work with six and seven, but communication. The power of uh, online video communication means essentially that um, speaking English, these people are going to have to learn English so that they can, you know, watch my videos. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah. Ian and I both play a game called Mountain Blade, which was uh, actually designed by someone in Eastern Europe, I believe. And uh, you can kind of tell because it translations to English are a little wonky sometimes, but it's an awesome game. Oh, yeah. And I, I, was, those and I was thinking that um, that just because of market forces, not because of right or wrong, just take right and wrong out of the equation, but because of market forces, I would think that countries like Estonia, which is very small, but per capita is the most wired country in the world, that market forces would drive someone from Estonia to develop a translation program from English to, I don't even know the dominant language of Estonia. But Estonia. Sure, that's a good guess. I, 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 I'm sure you know better than I, so I'm going to say, okay, Estonian. Estonian is a language group. Um, that, that, um, that, uh, that the market forces in whatever country is involved, because English is a bit of a worldwide language, sort of like French used to be, um, that, that the market forces would drive a translation.